В эфире программа This is our money, a program about anti-corruption investigations. My name is Dennis Bihus, and I welcome you in 2018. It brought us a lot of change. For example, in the coal industry, the name of the de facto head of the sector has changed, who is actually an underboss. This isn't really a positive change, but that's what we have. Actually, coal assets taken from the government by the entourage of Alexander Yanukovych six years ago should have been returned to state property after the revolution. Then, to please the state budget, they should have been optimized and privatized through a public competition. But they didn't even try. Literally. Причем в прямом сенсе. У 15-го года. In 2015, the assets started to slowly move into the ownership of our hero today. Then the state lost interest in returning it. On coal enrichment, Nadia Burdi. Donetsk region, Salidove, Korachove, Novogrodivka, villages and towns which sprung up around mines. The front line lies only 50 kilometers from here, and military vehicles pass here more often than public transport. Still, they managed to supply Ukraine with coal. 7 a.m. Office workers are just waking up in Kiev, while the administration of the Kotlarevska mine have already arrived at work. Those responsible for actually mining the coal went underground an hour ago. Meanwhile, the night shift emerges from the mine. Strong, brave, but tired, and somewhat dirty miners. That's our young and ambitious worker. Anton started working at the Kotlarevska mine seven years ago. Since then, the young man has been spending six hours underground every working day. The night shift begins at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. When Anton returns to the surface, others fill his place. The mine works in four shifts, 24 hours a day. This is a dynasty, to say so. My granddad worked here as a checkpoint foreman at this mine. My father, my mother, all worked here. And I followed in their footsteps. As most of the region's men, Anton didn't ponder long. He came to the mine just having finished the vocational school. He's used to hard work, as all miners are. When there is any. In April 2015, our long wall will be exhausted and won't be able to work. Already this spring, workers of Kotlarevska are threatened by unemployment. There aren't any more jobs for 2,000 men in Novorodivka. 3,000 workers of the neighboring mine, 1.3 Novorodivka, already work owing to governmental grants. Sounds strange, but the miners of a city built right in the middle of a coal deposit have no place to mine it. 3,000 people hang in midair, and now we are basically spongers of the state enterprise Silidu Vohila, which feeds us and sponges of the state. High production rates of prior years remain in the past. Nowadays, the 3,000-strong Novorodivka mine produces only 50 tons of coal a day, scraping the deposit bare. For example, in 2011, we produced a million tons. If we hadn't slowed down, with these coal seams, we could have produced a million tons, which would have been a significant increase for the government. Actually, the coal is still there. In 2011, the miners produced a million tons. They could do that today, but in 2012, the government gave the mines coal seams to a private company. 
Coal seams are underground coal deposits. Thus, the State Mineral Service has transferred the deposits of four local state mines to private companies. The coal seams were leased for 20 years to newly founded companies with the same names as the mines. All of them were owned by Alexander Yanukovych's entourage. The east wing was first given to guys from Yanukovych's team. That was Alexander Yanukovych. Three years passed. They aren't giving it back. Yanukovych fled the country in 2014. The State Mineral Service and the Ministry of Energy got new leadership. Then new new heads, then new 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 ones. But none of them mentioned the lost deposits, despite being able to return them. The first criminal proceeding concerning the theft of coal deposits kicked off as late as 2016. Meanwhile, the miners were fed with promises by officials of various levels. We have spoken about this with the minister on numerous occasions, and there are trials underway now, and the coal seams will go back to the mines. The MP from the opposition bloc sounds so optimistic because all these coal towns comprise his electoral district. And maybe he's not that comfortable telling his minor voters that all the trials to return the coal deposits were already lost by the state. And by the way, he's not the minister's main conversation partner on this topic. Now we're going underground. Let me help you. What's the maximum depth people descend to? 560 meters. Twenty meters underground. It's dark and damp. Only headlights and eyes shine in the darkness. There is still half a kilometer to go to the miner's workplace. Step aside. Okay. Your job is hard. It's normal. This is how the miners of Kotlarevska make a 30-minute trip to their workplace every day. 2,300 people work at the mine. There's enough coal left in the mine to last just a couple of months. Half of the coal seams of the state mine are ready for extraction, partially equipped and totally unreachable. We can't split it. They made it their private property, but they don't produce there and neither do we. The coal deposits lost by the government are very close. They're ready for mining, as tunnels had already been dug to the coal. Where is he taking us? We're going to descend deeper into an inclined carriage. Go! We make three signals that people are seated and the carriage is departing. Though currently, the miners just pass those tunnels by. They can't go there, private property. In an effort to avoid unemployment, every day the miners pass by the partially equipped mining plots, descend 500 meters below the surface, and dig for the deep-lying coal. The long wall will hold 400 to 410 tons, which will keep the mine occupied for about one and a half years with a daily production of more than 1,000 tons. A long wall is an equipped coal seam, ready to be mined. The new long wall will provide work for approximately one more year. This will be our future long wall. We're preparing it now. We're going to go down. The materials are being transported. The talk about the new long wall is full of hope, because if they won't get it running before spring, they will all end up unemployed. Here's the scene. See it, Nadia? I can see the coal. We've reached it. However, there are long walls nearby ready to be mined. They were prepared by the same miners before being handed over to Yanukovych's clique. Before giving them away, the state had spent almost 18 million on equipment. Come here. 
Grandpa, don't lead her there. Let the woman see what happens here. I see it. Look above, see what's going on? I see it's crumbling. This is coal, that's sandstone. We're working it. So this wall is broken down to advance and mine coal? Yes, advance, like the subway, but in mining conditions. Not from the surface, like in Kiev. It's hard to breathe here. The miners don't even dream about millions spent on equipment anymore. The long wall is built using leftover materials. Everything is outdated here. Some equipment is 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And our valiant mechanics make something from nothing. The equipment is outdated. Metal supports to reinforce drifts are hard to come by, as are the joints to hold them together. It's very tough. The administration of our mines desperately tries to get any money, but still. Mm -hmm. yeah. The miners use outdated, malfunctioning equipment, because without a working long wall in spring, they will be left jobless. It's easier to admit that the mine is unprofitable, to close it, and then let's buy coal abroad, while we sit on our own coal. For 11 months of 2017, Ukraine had imported 17.4 million tons of coal, worth $2.5 billion. 56% of coal, worth $1.3 billion, was imported from Russia, the aggressor country. Let's buy coal abroad while we sit on our own coal. How did it happen that state subsoil resources stolen by corrupt officials of the previous government were not returned to state property after four years, although legally possible? The answer to this question may lie in the timely change of the owners of the companies, which control the coal. Only the State Mineral Service may issue licenses for coal mining. There are two ways to obtain one. An auction of already explored deposits through exploration of new deposits by a private company. But first, you need to get a special license for exploration, too. In 2012, the deposits, later given to Yanukovych's entourage, were owned by state-run Salida Vuhila. They weren't just explored, but actively extracted. There was no point in exploring them, although, basically, they bought the information from a state enterprise, geological information. But the coal seams, with long walls ready for mining, were handed over to Yanukovych's people precisely for that reason. As if the ex-president's companies have really discovered these deposits, having paid for the geological information. This trick was not provided for in any law. After Yanukovych's family fled the country, work at the private mines came to a halt. We can't split it, they made it their private property. But they don't produce there, and neither do we. And everything is built there, isn't it? Can you just go there and mine? Of course. You just have to make a cut. There's left. There's a point where you just have to make a cut. Mm -hmm. It can be made earlier than here. Make it in mine, it's just... Has the work stalled there? We don't have the right to work there because it's private. Two years of disuse of Yanukovych's long walls allows the State Mineral Service to cancel the license. The coal deposits stood idle for two years, from 2014 to 2016. The State Mineral Service could have returned the coal seams to state mines. Both the industry law and the contract between the service companies, between the service and the companies, says so. But during that time, the companies changed leadership. So the owners change, and the State Mineral Service decides against returning the coal seams, and decides to give the companies another two years.
Geology of Ukraine, Contemporary History. Yanukovych's clip takes the deposits, revolution comes, then the state must revoke the licenses. But this time, the coal was taken from Yanukovych's click and licenses given for two more years. Actually, a new window of opportunity to return the coal was this year, 2018. But there are no official reasons to do so anymore because the coal is being mined there. Although by miners of the state mine contracted by the new private company, but de jure that's work, and the new owner gets to keep the seams. Let's meet him at last. The 1.3 Novogrodivka mine does not have any long walls, and the work has stalled. Actually, there are long walls. The same mine has long walls which were extorted under Yanukovych. The government had the opportunity to take them back after they stood idle for two years. But that hiatus was forgiven, and at the end of 2017, the private owners hired the state miners to mine their coal. We are working on Yanukovych's coal seams on a contract. We have mined 7,849,000 tons. They owe us already. However, the companies are no longer connected to Yanukovych. They have new owners now. The new owner of the ex-state mines is Tamara Zodoya. She's playing a double game. She owns the coal seams and she is an accountant on a state coal enterprise in the neighboring city of Mirnovgrad. Don't fret, guys. You'll work as you always have. Kyiv, the Ministry of Energy and Coal Mining, November of 2017. While the formal owner is the accountant, the miners tell the ministry directly who really controls the Yanukovych companies and controls the mines of the region. Kropachov says, don't fret guys, you'll work as you always have. I'll tell and you'll work. We know who he is, the underboss of our region. Good afternoon, I'm Vitaly Kropachov. Vitaly Kropachov, ex-deputy of Donetsk Regional Council, owner of logistics companies and a number of coal assets, coal enrichment and shaft design factories among them. For 13 years, I have taken part in the creation and reforming of the sector. My analytical notes were accounted for in the current concept of reforms. This is not the first recess period for the coal sector. In 2015, Kropachov moved to Kyiv, rented a building in the capital center, and moved his Donetsk business there. Companies with no official connection to him were also moved there. They also took part in tendering with state mines. His business shot up after the relocation, his companies winning contracts worth hundreds of millions, while Kropachov himself starts buying up coal factories in Donbass. This building now houses the business of the so-called underboss of the coal sector of Ukraine. 500 meters from here sit the deputies of the industry minister. But the businessman does not go to the deputies, he goes straight to the minister. It is here to another office, which is Minister Ihor Nasalik's reception, where Kropachov goes to. Here is Kropachov's car, freely entering a private parking of the Ministry of Energy. Here is the minister's reception. Minutes after Kropachov's car, the car of the minister's son enters the yard. In an hour, Vitaly Kropachov exits the ministry, along with his bodyguards. The ability to visit the minister is granted to Kropachov by enrichment plants he has been buying up for the last two years. 
His wife has already bought a fraction of the Ukraine factory, so either show him to us, we'll look into his eyes, or we'll meet him. We can't get a meeting out of him. Coal enrichment plants Ukraine and Russia, as well as the coal seams they stand on, were state-run once. In 2012, the state property fund handed them over to companies of Yanukovych's entourage, along with three other factories, selling them at illegally low prices. Then, the Ministry of Energy and Coal tried to appeal against the fund's decision, but failed. The gray building is the factory. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, I see. So here is the so-called production. Coal is enriched here? Yes, that's where they have the equipment. That's where enrichment takes place. They enrich, clean, sort it, and then, then haul them to train cars. Enrichment is a necessary stage of coal production. That's why the enrichment facilities were built right beside the mines. The coal is mined and enriched on the spot. Transporting it somewhere to enrich is not profitable. You can load ordinary coal up on a train and haul it to another factory, but it's expensive. The enrichment factory near the Kotlarevska state mine and the coal seams were transferred from Yanukovych to Kropachov. The coal beds belong to third-party companies, while the factory is formerly his own. This year, the mine will enrich 400,000 tons of coal here, and it will pay for it, of course. The competition for enrichment had no competitors. Anyway, the mine's conveyor belt goes straight to Kropachov's factory. The monopoly allows Kropachov to increase the prices on coal enrichment threefold. Even if the factories would double the price by tomorrow, the state mines will still pay for enrichment. That's how Vitaly Kropachov enriches himself. The businessman, who was famous before the Euromaidan revolution. But a lot has changed since then. The president. The life of ordinary miners hasn't changed. The life of the ex-president's son has somewhat worsened. And Kropachov's wealth has increased substantially. He has literally inherited the coal assets of Alexander Yanukovych. So the person openly called an underboss has arranged for his ownership of coal deposits and enrichment plants. His wealth is growing rapidly. He is close to power. He has free access to ministers. He is close to power. He has free access to the minister's office. His companies win contracts worth millions on state mines tenders. His enrichment prices twist the state's hands because he has the monopoly. Kropachov? No, that's not about him. I had Yanukovych in mind. Everything's not the same now. How could you have mixed it up? After the materials were prepared right before airing, we managed to get Mr. Kropachov's answer. Here are the most interesting parts. I don't know anything about the activity of the private company 1.3 Novorodivka and SE Silidiv Vuhila, which I do not own in any way, and to the management of which I have no connection. On the 4th of December 2017, I visited the Ministry of Energy and Coal Mining of Ukraine. The goal of my visit concerned the perspectives of coal sector development, but I didn't meet the minister Igor Nasalik in person. But only the minister and his staff work here on Kershatik 30. That's all for today. Message us on social media, watch us on YouTube, and if you have any interesting ideas, feel free to email us. You will be able to watch us on TV in just a week. This was the program Our Money. My name is Dennis Bihus. See you later.